One of the interesting postulates of the kinetic molecular model is that it gives us the meaning of temperature. In thermodynamics, the kinetic energy of a collection of gas particles is equal to 3 halves RT. And you may be noticing something looks familiar. That's right. Recall the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. If we set both sides of the equation equal to RT, we see that two-thirds kinetic energy is equal to PV over N. Let's discuss how we arrive to this elegant thermodynamic relationship. Consider a gas particle in a box. According to kinetic molecular theory, the gas particle is in constant motion and from time to time it will collide with the wall of the container. And kinetic molecular theory assumes that these collisions are elastic. In other words, kinetic energy is conserved. More on this in a moment. Let's move our particle in a box over to the side and look at the pressure of a single gas particle. The pressure is the force per unit area. And from Newton's second law, force is mass times acceleration. And acceleration is the change in the velocity over the change in time. Let's focus on the change in velocity first. The particle is traveling with some initial velocity, then collides with the wall of the container. Since the collision is elastic, the final velocity is the same as the initial velocity, except with the opposite sign, since the particle is now traveling in the opposite direction. Thus, the change in the velocity is 2v. I'll insert 2v into the equation, and I'm using the absolute value, since the direction of the particle isn't important for this exercise. Now let's resolve the change in time. Kinetic molecular theory does something clever here to account for the change in time by multiplying the equation by the collisional frequency. This is how often the particle collides with the wall. The particle in the image is traveling with some velocity and will eventually collide with the wall of some length L. The collisional frequency is V over L. So let's multiply the collisional frequency and remove the change in time. Here's the updated equation. So far, we've considered one particle moving in one direction. But of course, it moves in three directions. So we'll assume the velocity term in the equation reflects all three directions. Now, we can look at the area term. This is relatively simple. The area would be one side of the box of length L squared. And of course, there are six sides of the box, so the area is equal to 6L squared. Let's insert this into the equation for area. 2 over 6 is 1 third, and the length terms multiply in the denominator to give length cubed. I'll multiply by n the number of moles. Up until now, we were considering one particle. Now we'll consider a mole of particles. And finally, let's close our proof by multiplying the equation by 2 over 2. Yes, this sounds silly, but when I insert 2 over 2 into the equation, we see a familiar friend. 1 half mv squared is kinetic energy. Let's rewrite the equation in terms of kinetic energy. I'll rearrange to solve for the kinetic energy. And recall from the ideal gas law that PV over N is equal to RT. We can substitute this term into the kinetic energy equation and get our final equation. This brings us back to the fourth postulate of the kinetic molecular theory. The average kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas and equal to 3 halves RT. 
Notice how the kinetic energy of a gas is dependent only on the temperature. So this equation applies to all ideal gases. Next, let's use this equation to relate how the velocity of a gas is affected by its mass and temperature.